Hello my beautiful armies. I hope you are going well I'm fine too. As you know nowadays hottest topic is? So let's uncover and start. CEO Min Hee Jin is accused by HYB of using corporate cash to see a shaman before making important ADOR decisions. At a press conference on April 25, Min Hee Jin refuted HYB's assertion that she intended to assume full control of the company. A number of startling facts on the ongoing conflict between K-pop heavyweights HYB and ADOR have surfaced, providing insight into the turbulent relationship between the two groups. When HYB launched an unexpected audit on April 22, 2024, aimed at ADOR and its executives, specifically CEO Min Hee Jin, the conflict intensified. Min Hee Jin addressed the growing crisis at an impromptu press conference on April 25 in reaction to the increased tensions. We present to you 10 shocking discoveries from this conflict between these titans of industry while the fight rages on. 1. HYB's Evidence Against Min Hee Jin Following an audit, HYB revealed results indicating that Adair CEO Min Hee Jin intended to seize control of the company and cut all connections with HYB. The statement provided proof of a well-thought-out scheme by ADOR executives Min Hee Jin and others to entice investors and put pressure on HYB to sell its stake in ADOR. HYB thereupon declared that Min Hee Jin will be the target of a lawsuit alleging breach of trust. 2. HYB claims Min Hee Jin consulted a shaman for Adair's decisions. A shaman was routinely consulted by CEO Min Hee Jin for important ADOR decisions such as label naming and personnel appointments, as HYB discovered during the audit. She is accused of giving the shaman access to the personal information of job applicants so he could evaluate them and choose those he approved. This raises questions about the company's ethical standards and decision-making procedures. 3. Min Hee Jin admits consulting shaman for BTS and new genes. Min Hee Jin confirmed that she was acquainted with the shaman and gave the excuse of approaching them due to mental stress. She expressed worried for the company's future without its star member and acknowledged talking to the shaman about BTS's military enlistment. She understood that what she was doing was out of the ordinary, but she saw it as a chance to advertise new genes while BTS wasn't around. 4. Min Hee Jin was happy about BTS enlistment. In the course of the audit, HYB disclosed that CEO Min Hee Jin sought advice from a shaman over BTS's military enrollment and its possible effects on her career. The shaman allegedly told Min Hee Jin that if BTS enlisted, it would be advantageous for both her and ADOR. According to snippets discovered during the audit, Min Hee Jin appeared to be comfortable with BTS's absence, possibly hinting to possible personal benefit. 5. Min Hee Jin exploited company funds for shaman services. HYB found evidence during their audit at ADOR that CEO Min Hee Jin may have paid for shaman cleansing services with business monies. According to reports, the shaman in question founded M Partners in August 2021 along with M Consultancy, a related service provider. According to HYB's findings, Min Hee Jin billed ADOR for shaman cleansing services for her own studio, which raises concerns about the company's accountability and financial transparency. 6. Min Hee Jin claims Illit copied new genes. CEO Min Hee Jin asserted that her reservations regarding Illit's purported plagiarism of new genes were the root of the dispute between ADOR and HYB. She made it clear at an emergency news conference on April 25 that although she doesn't directly blame Illit, she does hold the adults who influence them accountable. Min Hee Jin provided numerous examples to support her claim that Illit was emulating the concept and marketing strategy of new genes, including Hanbok photo shoots, haircuts, dance, and debut album concepts. 7. Min Hee Jin denies intentions of taking over Adair. Beginning her emergency press conference on April 25 at 3 p.m. Korea Standard Time, the Adair CEO rejected HYB's claim that she was planning to usurp all management rights. She said she never had any intention to take over ADOR while saying it seemed impossible since HYB owns 80% shares. Everything HYB is saying is a lie, she said. 8. Min Hee Jin claims Bang Si Hyuk wanted to crush SPA. CEO Min Hee Jin revealed that she was instructed to stomp on an SPA during a conversation with HYB chairman Bang Si Hyuk, which she insisted was never her aim. The Kako Talk communication that was made public reveals internal conflicts in the sector and disparate strategies for competing. 
9. Minhee Jean accuses HYB of favoring Ellie Seraphim over new genes. CEO Min Hee Jean revealed during her controversial news conference that she encountered resistance when trying to introduce new genes before Ellie Seraphim because HYB preferred the latter's introduction. She claimed that in an attempt to cause misunderstanding, Bang Si Hyuk presented Ellie Seraphim as her girl group. Min Hee Jean was confused, but since she was new to the company, she had to comply discreetly. 10. Min Hee Jean claims she has new genes and their family's support. CEO Min Hee Jean broke down in tears as she said at a press conference that parents pushed her to tell her side of the story and that both New Jean's members and their families supported her throughout the conflict. She disclosed that the members of New Jean's showed solidarity, with a few even breaking down in tears, demonstrating a strong unity throughout difficult times. Now let's talk about Baby Monster. Thanks to positive reviews from music lovers, YG Baby Monster's official debut single, Sheesh, shattered records on the domestic charts every day, launching the song's rise to fame. As of 9 a.m. on the 23rd, Baby Monster's Sheesh was ranked 9th in the Melon Hot 100 according to YG Entertainment. Specifically, it shot up to 14th in the very competitive Melon Top 100, which is an exceptional feat for a novice. This is the outcome of his exceptional live performance skills garnering positive feedback from music enthusiasts. Thanks to this kind of word of mouth, the company has progressively raised its ranking even though it has been well over three weeks since the announcement on the first. In reality, Baby Monster won over fans with its distinctive live performance in music streaming, YouTube videos, and entertainment. It's also thought to have contributed to the public's increased awareness of Baby Monster and the growth of music sources. Apart from Melon, Sheesh is another popular song among listeners on major domestic music charts. Apart from Bugs being the current no. One on Naver Vibe, other artists like Genie and Flo are also breaking their own records and rising quickly. The achievement in the international charts is equally noteworthy. After 21 days on the charts, Spotify, the biggest music streaming service in the world, has rewritten its own top ranks, coming in at number 23 and number 49 on the U.S. Billboard Global Excal. U.S. and Billboard Global 200 charts, respectively. On the other hand, Baby Monster, who is establishing itself as a leading figure in the upcoming K-pop girl group, published its debut mini-album, Babyman's 7 ERA on the 1st. The music video for the lead single Ashish on YouTube topped 100 million views in 10 days, which is the quickest period for a K-pop girl group debut. The album sold 401,287 copies in a week setting a new record for the first album to launch as a K-pop girl group. Now ITS Time TO discuss her kept one or to disband in July as scheduled with no contract extensions. Reports from media outlets on April 25 state that Kep One or a Project Girl Group will wrap up its operations in July. The nine-piece girl group made their debut in January 2022 with the publication of their first mini-album, First Impact, after meeting on Nets at Girls Planet 999 survival program. The group's contract has an expiration date of July and it was initially inked for a duration of two years and six months. Kep One Er plans to say goodbye to their followers by releasing a solo album in Korea and performing a solo show shortly. As for Kep One Er's contract extension, it was previously reported that representatives of the member agencies met to discuss the matter. As with previous net project groups, it appears that no agreement was reached and after July, the participants will rejoin their respective labels. That's all folks. Thanks for your time, don't forget to like and subscribe before Bina. I'm waiting for your comments so stay tuned, bye bye.